One moment, she was one of the richest and hottest stars in the world. The next, she was dead broke, living in a parking lot. So who really was behind Dottie West's tragic fall from grace? Today, decades later, her children are speaking out. Over the decades, Dottie West transformed from conservative country sweetheart, the adorable girl next door, to sequined sex symbol. But then it all came crashing down. Hundreds of people, including the President of the United States, mourned after she passed. But where were they when she was alive? And who was really responsible for Dottie West's downfall? Today we're taking a closer look at the tragic rise and fall of Dottie West. What did Patsy Cline tell her that she carried for the rest of her life? But most importantly, what doomed the country sunshine girl? Before we begin, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more country content like this. Now, you ready? Well, come on and let's go find out. What happened? The Early Years When her life was crumbling before her eyes, Dottie would look back on her early life in rural Tennessee with mixed emotions. Would she have been better off just staying put? giving up on her dreams and living a hard but simple life. You see, Dottie grew up in a town called Frog Pond, Tennessee. Holy greatest town name, Batman. And although it was just 64 miles from Nashville, it was such a backwater that it might have been, well, a frog pond. Dottie was the eldest of 10 kids in a dirt poor house. Her father was an alcoholic who beat and abused her. It seemed she was doomed to repeat her mother's life, raise 10 children and marry a local jerk, you know, and then die. But Dottie made a decision. As soon as she turned 17, she reported her dad to the local sheriff. And they put that scumbag away for 40 years. Dottie West was now free. She actually lived with the sheriff for a bit, and then she moved around a while until she got a scholarship to attend music school. This is where she met her husband, a steel guitar player. The next step was pretty clear. Nashville, country music stardom, and a brand new Dottie West. Nashville. In Nashville, Dottie would go through the first of many transformations in her life, but she would also face the greatest tragedy of her life, and she would never be the same. This is where Dottie met people like Willie Nelson and Roger Miller. But most importantly, Patsy frickin' Klein. It was Patsy who taught her how to perform. She once told her, quote, If you can't do it with feeling, then don't. When Dottie didn't have enough money to buy groceries, Patsy and her husband would pay her for odd jobs and just give her cash. With such good mentors, Dottie began climbing in the slippery Nashville scene. She began building a career and a sparkling reputation Whenever someone offered her a song that was even a bit raunchy, she refused it. She wore granny-style gingham dresses and kept it clean at all times. All the while, she dreamed of one day repaying Patsy for all her kindness. But as you might expect, she never got that chance. In 1963, Patsy and Dottie both attended a benefit concert in Kansas City. Dottie actually begged Patsy to drive home with her just hoping to make the long and dusty drive a little less boring. Patsy refused. She was anxious to get back to her kids. But Patsy Cline never made it back to her kids or Nashville. The plane went down and Dottie never saw her friend again. Dottie then considered giving it all up. The money, the music, the struggles. But she knew she couldn't let Patsy's kindness go to waste. So she resolved to become the biggest star she could even if it cost her everything. And believe me, it would. The 70s were coming, the times they were a-changing, and not necessarily for the better. The 1970s. The world was changing. People didn't want pop stars to look like grandmas. They didn't want slow ballads about taking your best girl to the dance. They wanted fun, energy, and sex. And so Dottie changed too. She tossed her granny dresses in the trash and began dressing in sequins and revealing spandex. 
Sure, she was in her 40s, but who cared when you looked as good as her? And it wasn't just her image that changed. Dottie put country music behind her and started making pop. Or at least pop country, collaborating with Kenny Rogers. And living up to her image as a sex symbol. She divorced her first husband, who she accused of drinking too much and sleeping around. Then she started shacking up with some younger boy toys. By the time the decade came to a close, Dottie was a massive hit. She put out her biggest songs, smash hits like A Lesson in Leaving, the only thing changing is my way of thinking. and Every Time Two Fools Collide. Every time you know she even had her own balloon in the Macy's Thanksgiving Parade. But then something big happened. Just a little something called the 1980s. The 1980s. The world just kept changing. Hippies were out. Disco was in. Was there even room for Dottie West? The answer at first, it seemed, was yes. Dottie's spandex get-ups, which made headlines in the 1970s, were no big deal in the 1980s. And her music didn't seem to scratch the same itch. People didn't just want something you could dance to. They wanted thumping beats that you could dance to all night long. Was Dottie West just too old-fashioned for the 1980s? Heck no, she said. Dottie West can keep up with anybody. All she had to do was keep upping the ante and the sex appeal. She posed nude in a men's magazine. She left her then-husband for an even younger guy, her sound guy who was 22 years her junior. And then there were the drugs. Lots and lots and lots of drugs. She even tried to pivot to acting and starred in some sci-fi flicks. All the while, Dottie embraced the 80s lifestyle. She was a big partier and an even bigger spender, which all seemed to work for a little while. But then the money stopped rolling in. Nobody was buying Dottie West albums anymore. She just wasn't controversial. So she fell. The Downfall By the 1990s, the world seemed to have forgotten Dottie West. But even the biggest pessimist couldn't have predicted how bad things were about to get. The second the money ran out, everybody seemed to turn on her. Her high-flying lifestyle had finally caught up with her. Put simply, she owed a lot of people a lot of money. Dottie owed the IRS $1.3 million, and they weren't about to accept an IOU. Virtually all her belongings were seized and sold off in a public auction. The IRS would regularly come, day or night, and snatch whatever she had lying around. They even took her music industry plaques off the wall. Dottie was evicted from her Nashville mansion and ended up living in a parking lot in her tour bus. Until, finally, that was even taken away from her. As her life was crumbling, Dottie couldn't help but think of Patsy and what she had once told her. When you're on stage, sing to the audience with all your heart and mean it. Then cast a spell over them. If you can't do it with feeling, then don't. So, had Dottie lost sight of what really mattered? And was there enough time left to make things right? A comeback. Dottie made a plan. She was going to make a comeback album with her friends. Kenny Rogers, Tammy Wynette, and more were on board. She was scheduled to perform at the Grand Ole Opry. There was just one problem. All of her vehicles had been auctioned off. All she had was an old Chrysler that Kenny Rogers gave her. And when it came time to go to the show, the old clunker wouldn't start. Luckily, Dottie's 81-year-old neighbor saw her by the side of the road and offered to drive her. She was running late, so she told him to drive as fast as he could. What she couldn't have known was that her kindly neighbor just happened to be over the legal limit. The old man drove 55 in a 25 when the car went airborne off an exit ramp and struck the central divider. Not long after that, Dottie West passed away basically penniless at 58 years old. It's easy to look at Dottie West's story as a tragedy, but there was so much beauty in her life too. Even as her life fell apart, she cherished the things that were important to her. Family, country, and music. And until the day she died, she never gave up hope for a comeback. 
Her funeral was attended by Emmylou Harris, Connie Smith, Johnny and June Carter Cash, and hundreds more. Even George H.W., who was a lifelong fan, spoke up to remember Dottie. So instead of seeing her life as a failure, it's important to remember the joy that her music brought to so many, many people. Until the day she died, she never forgot the advice that Patsy Cline told her. If you can't do it with feeling, don't. And if Dottie ever did anything, she did it with feeling. Alright, that's enough of me. What do you think? Do you agree with that Patsy Cline advice? What's your favorite Dottie West song? Your favorite Patsy Cline song? And do you think Dottie West could have made a comeback if that car hadn't crashed? Get in the comments and tell us all things Dottie West. If you enjoyed our deep dive today, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps. Subscribe to our channel and come back often so we can keep telling you 